What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Resurrect. Now behind me is my next project car. This is a car that's going to either make or break me. But let me tell you a little bit about my journey. Um, even before this YouTube channel for many years I've been flipping vehicles for the last 10 years or so salvage vehicles. But as a kid my dad was a used car dealer and growing up in the late 80s and early 90s I used to follow him around scavenging for car parts in really sketchy junkyards. Um, so Later on in life, uh, I ended up actually starting to flip cars on my own. However, I kind of left the trade for a while. But then about 10 years ago, a couple guys introduced me to the salvage auctions. They said that they were doing very well flipping cars from these auctions, such as Copart and Insurance Auto Auctions. And I didn't really believe them at the time. But after watching some of the prices what these cars were selling for at the auction, I saw, wow, there is a huge uh, margin for profit here. And knowing that I could do the work either entirely myself or I knew the guys that could help me get the work done, I thought, why not let me give it a try? So I've been doing salvage cars for about 10 years or so, slowly working my way up, getting into bigger ticket cars. Um, and until that point, um, I was doing quite well, but now I'm trying to move on to the next level. So I've been hunting for a car for a while. Now up until this point, as I said earlier, the most uh, high-end vehicles that I had dealt with was a 2012 Mercedes C63 AMG Edition 1, which was roughly a $45,000, $50,000 car all fixed up. And I landed that thing for $15,000 in its damaged state, and it had a smashed front end. Uh, I also dealt with a th 2013 CTSV that cost me about $10,000. That was about roughly worth the same $45,000 uh, in its repaired state. Um, but now I had a budget of about $25,000, and I was looking to move on to the next level. So I had my sights set on the highest and most expensive, sexiest car I could acquire for that budget with a reasonable amount of damage. So I was thinking maybe a Nissan GTR or possibly a Maserati Gran Turismo. So I actually went down to look at some of these cars. Uh, this particular Maserati that I am looking at ended up selling for over $30,000. Uh, and this thing, mind you, is probably only worth $50,000. Uh, this GTR went for about 25 grand and had an engine that would not start, possibly damaged, and it had two bent frame rails in the front. Now, if we look at uh, this other GTR, this one had a bent frame rail in the rear and it sold for $42,000 with a retail value of $50,000. For me, these prices were way too high and way too close to their clean title values. These prices were almost half of the retail value or more, sometimes three quarter. And at this price point, considering what the repairs would cost and considering that after all the repairs were said and done, you would have a previously salvaged car, the numbers just didn't add up. Now, every, after everything would be finished, I would have a car that might be worth exactly what I had in it. There's a lot of people on YouTube, a lot of YouTubers that make videos about salvaged supercars but what they don't talk about is what they actually paid for the cars and for the repairs. And with some online research, I found that what they pay for these cars after everything is said and done, it just doesn't make any sense financially without YouTube. And really the only money they make from these deals is the money from the YouTube videos that they post. So in this channel, I'm trying a slightly different approach. I'm already in the business of buying and selling cars, but I'm trying to answer the question for myself. Can a salvage supercar actually give you a decent return on your investment? And during my quest, I wanted something a little bit more high-end, like a Ferrari or Lamborghini. But even then, the prices for these cars were just way too high until I came upon this listing. It was a local off-site sale on Copart, a completely front-end destroyed Ferrari 458 Italia, and the price was pretty close to my budget. The photos of the damage look heavy, but not out of my comfort zone. Another thing that made this deal intriguing is that the seller way underestimated the retail value and the car had a clean title. This deal was a total gamble because the car was off-site and, and it could not be seen. And even if I could have seen the car in person, due to the buy it now and the low price point, I knew this car would not last long. So just after a few hours of the listing showing up, I made my offer and I, in my head I had figured the seller would refuse, but to my surprise, the seller actually agreed and I was blown away. Maybe it had something to do with the zombie apocalypse that's going on right now. 
Now we're not gonna do an exact price reveal just yet, but I promise you I will do a price reveal at the end and I will tell you exactly what I paid for this car and what it costs to repair. But just to give you a ballpark idea, what I spent on this car is about what a new Honda Accord would cost. The only scary thing is that the cost of all the parts needed to repair this car, not including the labor, is about as much as a brand new loaded Honda Pilot. So there's that. But I just could not pass up this deal for the price and I know that even in parts alone, the value of this car is there. So here I am making my way to see this car for the first time after I wired more money than I've ever wired to anyone in my life and I'm freaking out a little bit. The car looked about what I expected. Frame rails completely torn off the front. Airbags blown, except there were three main big surprises. First off, somebody completely obliterated the windshield, which was not accurately represented in the original photos. This was not a major deal since I knew the windshield was busted, but I was hoping it would at least keep the interior safe from the elements a little bit. So now I have to scramble to solve that problem. Also, the car seemed like it was able to roll perfectly fine and the wheels seemed to be in the right positions, but the seller didn't even try to tie up or strap up any of the loose parts hanging off the front end. Because of this, the tow truck driver or possibly the Copart forklift driver set one of the car wheels on top of a $2,500 radiator. If this radiator was usable prior to this caveman moving this car, I'll never know, but it certainly wasn't usable now. Also from the photos, I couldn't tell that the rear diffuser was broken and that the headliner was torn down, but these two things are not a major deal. Another thing I learned about Ferrari is that they are insanely wide because the car did not fit on my trailer. There is no way that this car can be rolled off my trailer, so there's also that. I also did my due diligence the night before by researching the dimensions of the car, but I guess the website I looked at was either inaccurate or perhaps it didn't account for the negative camber. Either way, I'm gonna have a lot of fun trying to get this car off my trailer. After driving 20 miles under the speed limit the entire way home and keeping a 100 car length space between me and the car in front, my brother-in-law and I got home to check out the car a little bit closer. There was literally glass everywhere, so we decided that it was best to clean up as much of the glass as we could out of it. I didn't want to damage the leather if I could help it. Once we got all the glass removed, we needed to take a look at the battery and the mechanicals. As soon as I got to the battery, I could tell that it was swollen and corroded, so I knew this battery was a lost cause. By the look of this car and the small amount of info that I could find on the web, I determined that this car was probably sitting for maybe a year or two. I put a jump box on the battery cable and I was able to power up the display, but after checking the fluid levels, I decided not to try starting this engine. I need to get this car on my lift, get it in the air, and do a thorough inspection of the mechanicals and of the structure. Another surprise is that once we removed the fragmented windshield, I could see some pretty gnarly damage to the lower windshield frame. Now it looks like this part is removable and it is a part that can be purchased from Ferrari, but I'm hoping that the structure underneath is okay and I'm hoping that the front subframe is saveable as this part alone costs about ten to $15,000. So this is where the video ends for now. I wonder what I got myself into during a massive pandemic, but I know that I've pulled myself out of hairy situations in the past and I can do it again, hopefully. Stay tuned for plenty of other videos on this car. If it is financially feasible, I will definitely be rebuilding this car, but only if it makes sense on paper. If I don't rebuild it, I will sell it as is or I will part it, but either way, I know the car was a great deal. Assuming the mechanicals are okay. I guess I'll just have to wait and see. Next video on this car will be doing some more extensive investigation, putting a good battery in the car and trying to get things started. Until next time, and as always, thanks for watching and please like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. I'll see you next time.